This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description. Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely hit subscribe and the notification bell before you go any further and you realise how fucking garbage this content is. But if this is not your first time on the channel, welcome back. For today's video, we are back on the how to play content. The intention of this video is not to teach you absolutely everything you need to know about an archetype, but to give you a very basic grasp of what you need to know to get going, or at least be better equipped to deal with facing down the deck on the opposite side of the table. And today's archetype of choice is Weather Painters, or The Weather as it's supposed to be called, but everyone just calls it Weather Painters anyway. Now it's pretty obvious why we're doing this. The Weather has just had two new cards announced uh, over Christmas by the OCG. However, we may see more come in the time that this has been recorded. So hopefully not because that'll ruin my whole fucking video. But assuming it doesn't, this should give you some more ideas of things you might want to try out or get to grips again with the very basics you need to know to pick up the deck and play for yourself. Now, before we continue, I do just want to do a big shout out to the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There is a link in the description. If you go ahead and use that, along with the code Rufio15, you'll get a nice 15% off some Yu-Gi-Oh! singles on their eBay store. You'll be supporting the channel and saving yourself some money in the process. But anyway, that's enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck into the video. The Weather is an archetype which debuted into the Yu-Gi-Oh! TCG in the side set Spirit Warriors, which was released at the tail end of 2017. The Weather archetype is made up of the Weather Monsters, designed after different weather conditions and mixed with a variety of artistic expressions, each one with their own tools relative to these expressions. On top of this, they're all linked to the rainbow, with each having their own unique colour. The Spirit Warriors set also debuted another column foe deck in Magical Musketeers, which brought them into the TCG as well, and much like their rainbow friends, they didn't get a look in at the game with any real significance. This set also dropped some more Six Samurai support, but again this didn't change much of the game's face. Now it is worth putting some context on the period of time in which this deck was released. This was an era following on from the need for the TCG to smack Gofu, set rotation and some pesky spiral cards in an emergency ban list, with the process trying to bring some balance back into the game. Little did they know this wouldn't make all that much difference. Spiral was still absolutely everywhere, and the rest of the format was made up of the likes of 60 card Lightsworn, Trick Stars and even some true Draco sprinkled in for good measure. With a format this explosive, there really was no wiggle room for the Weather Painter deck to get a word in edgeways. The Weather Painter archetype has unfortunately continued to sit more or less on the fringes of the game ever since, played mostly by enthusiasts of the deck with a bit of a cult following, and at the end of 2021 and beginning of 2022 as it rolls around at the time of this recording, the deck hasn't budged much in these four and a bit long years. But Christmas 2021 saw a glimmer of hope. New support was on its way. The OCG Yu-Gi-Oh! Twitter dropped some bombshell news for the colour-loving duelists out there, with two different new Weather Painter cards, a Ling 3 monster, and a spell card which add a huge improvement into the existing archetype, and one that has got everyone talking about the deck. So as we get going into this video, it's no surprise that you find yourself here, hoping to get a grip with the basics of what the deck is, what it does, what cards exist, and all that sort of nonsense. So let's talk a little bit about the playstyle of the deck. It does have a pretty unique mechanic for its playstyle, which is part of the reason it has retained this cult following referred to earlier. With the majority of the playstyle revolving around the use of continuous spell and trap support to gain additional effects for the main deck monsters. These effects activate by the monsters banishing themselves, and in doing so they summon themselves back during the following standby phase. The effects granted here are also quick effects, meaning they are able to be used to dodge a lot of effects within the game. Many of the monsters can also drop more spells and traps onto the board, meaning you can quickly start to build up a pretty formidable set of problems for your opponent to deal with. It also means that the deck has some great synergy with a lot of floodgates, which can easily be chopped and changed according to the requirements of the format. The deck will usually aim to set up a bit of a board that can also be protected using monsters such as Aurora, however this can be a little bit slow compared to the modern game style of play. 
Now it is worth noting if you're a particularly strong player or very resourceful, you can pilot the deck into some pretty strong positions. And the hope is that with this new support, the deck will get a nice added boost for some of the missing components to help get it over the line to be a genuinely playable meta deck. Even if that means it is just a solid rogue pick. The deck does sadly have a number of weaknesses, including the reliance on banishing, which in many formats is something people side for. Currently cards like Artifact Lancia are pretty common, with decks such as Phantom Knights, Tri Brigade, Sword Soul and more on the mind. The deck, oddly, can also lose to many of the things it tries to do, one such thing being banishing. Whilst the deck does banish, it needs to do so of its own accord, and making the decision for it with mass banishing effects can cut the head off the deck pretty quickly, since most of the recursion cannot touch those cards that are removed from play. For the next part of the video, we'll be taking a look at the weather cards themselves. Now, I will be reading some of these effects in a somewhat shortened manner, so do pay attention. Not to worry though, I will be showing the cards on screen so you can always read them, although given you are a Yu-Gi-Oh player, we both know you almost certainly won't be reading a fucking thing. As one final note before we get started, the OCG cards are not official in the TCG yet, so I am relying on some translations, the names and effects may differ once we get them, but this much should be obvious. Now it is worth noting that all the main deck monsters also share the same summoning effect. Which is that once per turn during the standby phase, in the turn following this card being banished from the field to activate a weather card, you can special summon it back. But now that we have that out of the way, let's get stuck into the actual cards themselves. So we start off with the Weather Painter Sun. If it's in your hand, you can send a continuous face-up spell or trap you control to the graveyard to special it in defense position. And if you do, you can place one weather spell or trap from your hand face up onto the field. This effect is a hard once per turn. Following on from that, we have the Weather Painter Thunder. You can send a face-up continuous spell or trap you control to the graveyard to place a weather spell or trap from the deck onto the field face-up. This effect is a hard one per turn. Weather Painter Aurora. When it's normal summon, you can place a The Weather spell or trap from your hand deck or graveyard face-up onto the field. The opponent cannot target weather spells and traps you control with card effects and they can't be destroyed by opponent's card effects. Next up we have the Weather Painter Snow. If it's normal summoned, you can place a weather spell or trap onto the field from your deck. This effect is a hard once per turn. We also have the Weather Painter Rain. If it's special summoned, you can place a weather spell or trap from your hand onto the field face up. This effect is a hard once per turn. The Weather Painter Cloud. If another weather card you control is sent to the graveyard, target up to two weather spells and traps in your graveyard and place them face up on the field. This effect is a hard once per turn. Next up we have the Weather Painter Rainbow. It's a link 3 that requires 3 weather monsters. When your opponent would special summon a monster or monsters, quick effect you can send this link summon card to the graveyard to negate and destroy that monster. It also has that summon back effect that we heard earlier from the other monsters. And on top of that, weather monsters it points to gain the following effect. When a card or effect is activated, quick effect, you can banish this card to negate the activation and destroy. To clarify, it means that the monsters it points to can banish themselves and not this link monster. After that, we have the weather painter Moonbow. Now, big shout out here to Alan McTavish, who does these awesome looking English text versions of the OCG cards and puts them onto his Deviant Art. You should definitely check those out. Now, this is also a link three that requires three weather monsters. If it's Link Summon, you can special summon one of your banished weather monsters. If this Link Summon card is destroyed, you can special summon one Weather Painter Rainbow from the extra deck. Weather monsters this card points to gain the following effect. Quick effect, banish this card, then target and banish one monster your opponent controls until the standby phase of the next turn. Once again, to clarify, that means the monsters it points to can banish themselves for that effect, and not this Link monster. That does however conclude our list of monsters that are currently released or due for release at the time of recording. Next up it's the spell and trap support for the archetype. So we start off with Cloudy Canvas. When the monsters in your main monster zone of this card's column and adjacent columns gain this effect. Yep, you're going to have to get your head around that one. You can banish this card and then target one face-up monster on the field to half its current attack until the end of the turn, but it can attack directly. It's worth noting that this is a quick effect and can't be activated during the damage step. You can only control one copy of Cloudy Canvas. Next up is Rainy Canvas. When the monsters in the main monster zone of this card's column and adjacent columns gain the following effect. 
You can banish this card, then target a spell or trap your opponent controls, quick effect, return it to the hand. You can only control one copy of Rainy Canvas. Snowy Canvas. Weather monsters in the main monster zones of this card's column and adjacent columns gain this effect. You can banish this card, quick effect, add one weather card from your deck to your hand. Also, you can't add cards from the deck to your hand for the rest of your turn, except by drawing them. You can also only control one copy of Snowy Canvas. Sunny Canvas. The weather effect monsters in your main monster zone of this card's column and adjacent columns gain the following effect. You can banish this card, then target one monster you control, quick effect, tribute this target, and if you do special summon a weather monster from your hand or graveyard, but not with the same name as the tributed monster had on the field. You can only control one copy of Sunny Canvas. And next up is our other OCG card that's coming out, and again another fantastic edit done by Alan McTavish. So when this card is activated, you can place a weather spell or trap from your deck face up onto the field. You can only activate one copy of Forecast per turn. You can also use each of the following effects once per turn, that's a hard once per turn. You can use face up weather cards in your spell and trap zones as material to link summon a weather link monster as if those cards are weather monsters. During your main phase, immediately after this effect resolves, normal one weather monster from your hand. And now we move on to the traps. Rainbow Canvas. You can only control one copy of Rainbow Canvas. Weather effect monsters in your main monster zone of this card's column and adjacent columns gain this effect. If your opponent controls a monster, quick effect, you can banish this card to special summon a weather monster from your deck with a different name from the one banished. Also, you can't special summon other monsters from the deck for the rest of the turn. Auroral Canvas. Monsters in this card's column blah 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 gain the following. When exactly one card is added to a player's hand except during the damage step, you can banish this card to banish the added card and if you do that player then gets to draw another card. You can only control one copy of Auroral Canvas. Although I'm not exactly convinced you'll want to play any copies in the first place. And then after that our final trap card is Thundery Canvas. This also has that column adjacent nonsense but then the card gains the following effect instead. At the start of the damage step, if this card battles an opponent's monster, banish your monster, then bounce theirs to their hand. You can only control one copy of Thundery Canvas. Now for this next part, I wanted to briefly mention that there are a ton of different options you might like to try out in conjunction with the Weather Painter archetype. Now for these non-archetype options, a couple you might consider are firstly the likes of the Heralds. Now the deck is already rammed full of fairy monsters, so there's not really a good reason not to do this. Other than, you know, space being too tight, but that really depends on what kind of build you go for. And the other option you might want to consider is Floodgates. Now, not everybody is a big fan of this one, but it would be unreasonable to ignore this, considering Floodgates can be an extremely potent option for this deck. The likes of Rivalry of Warlords, Macro Cosmos, and Anti-Spell Fragrance are all excellent choices. But again, these can quite easily be manipulated and chopped and changed depending on what the format needs. Now for the final part of the video. For this next part, I'll be running down some sample deck lists. These are not super tried and tested, but are mostly based on the ratios I've been seeing following a lot of research, as well as previously used variants, so you can get some ideas of what you might like to play, as well as a foundation you can test with before tweaking and optimizing. Once again, it's really important to stress that these are not super tried and tested, simply another resource for you to consider some options from. And that is all for today's video. A big thank you for coming along. Hopefully you've enjoyed it enough to hit subscribe or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. 
Once again, the intention with today's video is not to send you away an expert, but to give you some ideas of how to play the deck, get the very basics, you can go off and do your own thing, or just get a kind of basic understanding so you can go ahead and play against this deck with a little bit more confidence. Once again, a massive thank you for making it to this part of the video. Most people don't, so you are a unique one of a kind, and hopefully that does mean that you have hit that big red subscribe button, or maybe even hit the notification bell for good measure. Thanks again for coming along, I do really appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next one.